All right, West Coasters, we finally got the opening dates for Disneyland, plus a whole slew of new updates for upcoming stays in Disney World, loads of restaurant news and reviews, plus an update on Disney's overseas parks. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. This week, Disney released a ton of new info about Disney World Resorts, including what will and won't be available when they start to reopen in just over a week. We also have loads of food news and restaurant updates and some more info on the sports leagues finishing their seasons at Disney World. But first, let's jump into all that brand new Disneyland news. So the Disneyland reopening has been announced. They've officially told us when they're opening, and it's coming right on the heels of the Disney World reopening. Downtown Disney will begin reopening starting July 9th. Disneyland and Disney California Adventure have proposed dates of July 17th, which just so happens to be Disneyland's 65th birthday. Disney's Grand Californian Hotel and Spa and Disney's Paradise Pier Hotel will open on July 23rd. The Disneyland Hotel will be reopening at a later date, though Disney has not yet announced when that will be just yet. Just like in Disney World, Disneyland will be implementing health and safety measures, including increased sanitation, physical distancing, and reduced contact and touch points. They will also be using a reservation system to enter the park, so all guests, including annual pass holders, will need to make a reservation to get into Disneyland and DCA. New ticket sales are currently paused, including new annual passes and annual pass renewals. And you can still book hotel rooms at both Grand Californian and Paradise Pier as long as rooms are still available. Disney is waiving all change and cancellation fees for those guests who had trips planned prior to the hotel openings through July 23rd. All right, let's head over to those Disney World Resort updates. We've got a lot more updates coming out of Disney World regarding hotels that will begin opening June 22nd and just what you can expect. But first, let's talk a little bit about the changes being made to current reservations. So guests with existing resort reservations that have a departure date on or before July 11th when those parks begin to open are being asked to confirm, modify, or cancel their reservation. So if you confirm your reservation, but the hotel you plan to stay at is not open at that time, Disney will move you to another hotel at no additional cost, but you won't get to pick which hotel you get moved to. If you opt to move your trip to a future date, you'll be able to choose your hotel, but you'll need to pay the difference. Now, Disney had previously asked guests with reservations starting between June 22nd and July 4th to modify, confirm, or cancel their upcoming reservations, likely in order to gauge capacity. Remember, new bookings are still currently unavailable at Disney World hotels. Guests can now change or cancel their reservations up to October 3rd, 2020 without incurring a fee from Disney World, so they've waived their cancellation and change fees for hotel rooms up until October 3rd, 2020. This may not apply if you've booked through a third party though, so be sure to check those policies before you take action. Now, last week we reported on the confirmed opening of 11 Disney Vacation Club properties at Disney World, and this week Animal Kingdom Lodge Jumbo House appears to be reopening the 22nd as well. We were able to book a room there, but it is still not appearing on the official list of hotels. So that may be a glitch, it may be an issue, we'll keep you updated. And remember, only DVC members are able to book those hotels right now. So if you're not a DVC member, you won't be able to book that hotel or any hotel at the moment. Now, if you are among the first to return to the reopened hotels June 22nd or closely thereafter, things will be slightly different. Disney's released information on what amenities won't be available and which ones will be altered for the time being. So let's go through those. Magical Express will continue to run between the airport and Disney hotels. The resort airline check-in may be unavailable. Online check-in for your hotel reservation is strongly encouraged. Though a standard in-person check-in will be available and Magic Bands can be shipped to your home or to the resort if you prefer to pick them up when you arrive. All guests will be automatically checked out so you don't have to visit the front desk to check out. And several things will be completely unavailable. That includes arcades, campfires, character experiences, dog parks, the electrical water pageant will not be running, marina rentals, pin trading, playgrounds, spas and salons, and Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique. None of those are gonna be operating initially when those hotels reopen on June 22nd. Fireworks voyages, tasting cruises, the Wonderland Tea Party at 1900 Park Fair, Hula Lessons, in-room childcare services, mermaid school, which a lot of you probably didn't even know there was a mermaid school, and other special classes and programs will also be unavailable when those hotels open on June 22nd. 
Bell services will still be available at resorts and hotels, but they will not escort guests to their rooms. Shipping services and in-room celebrations will not be available, and deliveries will only be made to occupied rooms. Dry cleaning and valet laundry services will be temporarily unavailable. Self-service laundry, however, will remain available. Club level services will also be unavailable at this time. Club level is that concierge. So if you book concierge level at any of the hotels, that usually costs you an extra couple hundred dollars to book those club level rooms. Club level, not gonna be available. You won't have those club level lounges or the dedicated concierges to help you kind of get certain reservations and things like that. All right, feature pools, the large main pools at resorts may operate with reduced hours and pools will be operating with limited capacity to enforce social distancing. Leisure pools, however, will be open 24 hours a day. Now here's a biggie, Storm Along Bay at the Yacht and Beach Club will not be opening right away and guests can use other pools and the Boardwalk Inn main feature pool. So if you're staying at Yacht and Beach, Storm Along Bay is closed, but you can use the other pools at the Yacht and Beach Club and you can use the Boardwalk Inn pool as well. Fitness centers at resorts may have reduced hours and capacity, but things like basketball and tennis courts will be open with social distancing in place. Housekeeping will be seeing some changes as well. Prior to your stay, Disney will be giving guest rooms a thorough cleaning, quote unquote, paying special attention to high touch areas like TV remotes and door handles. Steam cleaning and vacuuming floors between guests will be done and housekeeping tools will also be cleaned between rooms. Rooms will receive a light cleaning service every other day of your stay, which will include removal of trash and used towels, replenishment of towels and amenities, wiping and cleaning of the vanity and counter services and vacuuming if needed. There will be extra linens and towels wrapped in single use packaging, individually wrapped glassware, double cased pillows, and additional items that have been cleaned and wrapped in single use packaging in the room before your arrival. You can decline every other day service and DVC guests will receive service on the fourth and eighth days of their stay unless declined. Disney World is also introducing a way for guests to virtually chat with resort cast members via the My Disney Experience app. This eliminates the need for many guests to go to the front desk. This is a really cool service that I've used at other hotels where you just get to text back and forth basically on a virtual chat with someone who works for the hotel. So if you need towels or if there's anything else that you need to ask about or ask for, you can do that through the virtual chat. Now we're still awaiting news on what visiting the parks will be like, though Disney did announce this week that disability access services will continue to operate when the parks reopen just like they did prior to the closings. We'll continue to keep you updated with any news that comes out, so be sure to follow us on social media, subscribe to our newsletter, get that information as soon as it comes out. Now, of course, Josh Demaro, the brand new Disney Parks chairman, has shared a message for guests. He acknowledges that they're taking baby steps, quote unquote, with guidance from experts to create a safe and smooth reopening process. But he also says, while certain aspects of your visit may change, I assure you the quality of our storytelling, magic of our experiences, and the caliber of our cast members has not. We recognize the trust that you have in the Disney brand, and we will continue to earn your trust every day. He also expressed gratitude to the Disney employees who have made all of this possible, and he wrapped up the message by sharing how excited he is to see everyone return to the parks upon reopening. Now, we've got a few updates from other Disney area resorts as well. The Four Seasons on Disney World property has announced it will be accepting reservations from July 1st onward. The Swan and Dolphin, also on Disney World property, will remain closed until July 29th, though they have reached out to guests with pre-booked reservations before that date asking them to confirm their reservations by June 15th, indicating that they may reopen to those guests who already have reservations prior to July 29th. Now, this back and forth is likely due to the fact that Major League Soccer is officially playing a tournament at the ESPN Wide World of Sports Complex beginning July 8th, and the players will be staying at the Swan and Dolphin. If you were planning a trip in the fall, we've just gotten word that the Swan and Dolphin Food and Wine Classic that was scheduled to take place November 6th and 7th, 2020, has been canceled. They do plan to resume the annual event next year, however. Now, very sadly, the Give Kids the World organization has released a statement on their extended closure. Give Kids the World Village is a nonprofit resort that works closely with the Make-A-Wish Foundation to provide cost-free Disney World vacations for children who are battling critical illness along with their families. Due to the global health crisis and the vulnerability of its guests, the resort has remained closed and will continue to remain closed even with the parks reopening. 
The group has had to make the difficult decision to lay off the majority of their staff as well. We wish this wonderful organization that has provided so many kids with happy memories over the years nothing but the best and a speedy return to their very, very important work. If you would like to donate to Give Kids the World, you can absolutely do that. Just head over to their website. All right, let's head over to Hong Kong Disney. Hong Kong Disneyland is set to reopen. They have not officially set a reopening date, but they have announced that the resort will be opening shortly. Nearby Ocean Park officially reopened today, and Hong Kong Disney is just waiting for government advisement to announce when they will reopen to the public. We've got some more Disney Cruise Line cancellations. Disney Cruise Line has now canceled all sailings on the Disney Magic through October 2nd, and the Disney Magic makes up all European departures, effectively suspending European cruises through the fall. Those being affected by the sailings are being offered the choice of a cruise credit to be used for future sailing or a full refund. Contact Disney Cruise Line or your travel agent for more information. All right, now we've got some Run Disney postponements and registration dates. Disneyland Paris has decided to postpone their annual run weekend until 2021. The event was planned to take place September 24th through the 27th. Guests can receive a partial refund of just their race package or a full refund of their entire resort package. Disneyland Paris has not yet released their reopening dates. In the U.S., the Disney World Princess Half Marathon is still going forward as scheduled, with early registration opening for affinity groups this week and quickly selling out. The event will take place February 18th through 21st next year, and general registration will open June 16th. Universal CityWalk Hollywood has reopened. They reopened to guests this past Wednesday with a phased reopening. Select stores and restaurants are open 12 to 8 daily. Now we're still awaiting an opening date for the Universal Hollywood Parks. And in restaurant news, more cast members have been called back to work on June 21st. Locations include many bars and restaurants around the resorts in Disney Springs and food handlers in Magic Kingdom. This is in addition to the 41 restaurants, bars, and lounges that Disney has announced will reopen with Vacation Club Resorts on June 22nd. You can see the full list of restaurants over at DisneyFoodBlog.com, but most notable is Topolino's Terrace, which will be running a modified character meal at breakfast. This is the only character meal returning to Disney World at this time. That's over at the Riviera Resort. And remember, they say it's going to be modified, so I don't think you're going to be hugging Mickey or anything. You're probably going to be able to see the characters, and they might do a little show, but I don't know if there's going to be actual contact between characters and guests. Now, dining reservations are not yet open, but we'll let you know as soon as they are. All right, let's talk about some changes to Disney World dining overall with those restaurants that are opening on the 22nd. Face coverings will be required for guests ages 2 and up, though they can be removed once you're seated. Enhanced cleaning procedures will also be present and digital menus and cashless payment methods will be available. Guests who wish to dine at a table service restaurant in a Disney Resort hotel must have a confirmed dining reservation if they are not staying overnight. And even more importantly, guests will not be permitted to enter a Disney hotel without either a confirmed hotel reservation or a confirmed dining reservation. So there won't be any sort of hotel or resort hopping unless you have a reservation and are staying there. There, or you have a dining reservation to eat there. So in order to even get into a Disney Resort Hotel, you're going to have to have at the very least a dining reservation. At this time, dining reservations are not available for in-park restaurants, but reservations will return at a later date. Now, when in-park dining does become available, guests will need valid park admission and a reservation for park entry and a dining reservation to dine at an in-park table service restaurant. So it won't be a situation where you're just in the Magic Kingdom already and you decide to go to Tony's Town Square. You will have to have an advanced dining reservation for Tony's Town Square in order to eat there at all. So menu items may vary on these restaurant menus. And as we said, character meals, with the exception of Topolino's Terrace, will be unavailable and dinner shows will also be unavailable. So no hoop de doo no beard of aloha. And remember that dining locations will be limited in capacity. Some will remain temporarily closed. Private dining and in-room delivery will also not be available initially. So no room service. That's super important to note. Now, if you are headed to Disney World there on June 22nd or shortly thereafter, I do suggest you go check out our post about which restaurants will be reopening. It's interesting to note that no signature dining locations are included. Those are the fancy schmancy two credit dining plan restaurants in the hotels. And also you won't have places like Ohana opening as well. So there are a select number of restaurants that are opening at those resorts. So if you're going at that time, head over to Disney Food Blog and check out our blog post to see all the 
the restaurants that will be open. All right, let's talk about Disney Springs. So at this point, we get more and more and more shops and restaurants opening at Disney Springs every day. As local guidelines and restrictions lift, we're seeing restaurants, bars, stores, lots more opening each day. I feel like we're just writing up post after post after post on the blog about all these new places opening. So here's a few of them. Vivoli Il Gelato and their smaller gelato cart are both open for business as of this week. Dockside Margaritas has also reopened along with several standalone bars at restaurants that had been previously opened like Paradiso 37 and STK. City Works has reopened as well. They were actually only open for about a month before the closures. And Raglan Road has also opened this week. Both Raglan Road and City Works have limited menus. The food trucks have also reappeared on the west side of Disney Springs, though only the cookie dough and everything sweet truck is open, at least when we're recording this. And Homecoming will reopen on June 17th, and their brand new patio space will have a grand opening that day as well. So we've got many stores reopening in Disney Springs too, in addition to those restaurant reopenings. Disney Springs welcomed back a whole bunch of places, including Goofy's Candy Company, the Candy Cauldron, and the Ganachery. So that means lots of yummy sweet treats are now available in Disney Springs again. Ever After has opened, so you can get the latest Disney Doonies. Disney Style is open. The Art of Disney, both the Marvel Superhero Headquarters and Star Wars Galactic Outpost shops, Disney's Days of Christmas, Love Pop, and Pin Traders are all open now. But note that you can buy pins at Pin Traders, but you cannot trade pins there at this time. Okay, let's talk about a few food reviews and some food news. Now remember, we have blog posts about all this stuff. So if you guys want more information, you wanna see more pictures, more details, you can head over to the blog to check out any one of these. First up, the birthday cake shake and strawberry shortcake bombolato. Vivoli Il Gelato has reopened on their fifth anniversary and to celebrate they debuted the birthday cake shake. This is cake batter gelato blended with milk and it's topped with a cupcake, whipped cream and rainbow confetti sprinkles. The flavors were spot on and at $14 this thing is huge so prepare to share. Vivli Il Gelato was also serving up the strawberry shortcake bombolato for $9.50. It's a warm Italian donut stuffed with the same cake batter gelato topped with fresh strawberries and a drizzle of strawberry sauce. Super pretty, very delicious, even if we would have liked a little more gelato. Starbucks has brand new drinks. These are their summer drinks in Disney Springs. The Campfire Cold Brew and Picnic Punch. Campfire Cold Brew is made with Starbucks signature nitro cold brew blended with milk chocolate, topped with a marshmallow cold foam and graham cracker crumbs. There's just a hint of sweetness to this one, so if you want it a little sweeter, ask for more foam on top or an extra pump of chocolate syrup. We definitely needed more. Picnic Punch is a pineapple matcha drink that comes topped with a strawberry sweet cream cold foam. We like this one a bit more. The strawberry foam helped balance out the bitterness of the matcha. There's a jumbo rainbow donut over at Joffrey's. This is here for Pride Month. Now this one is just the regular gigantic vanilla frosted donut king donut you can always get at Joffrey's, but the new design is adorable. It's only around through June 28th. And we found a nacho ice cream sundae. We stopped by Ghirardelli and they've added a nacho sundae to the menu. The sundae comes with three scoops of your choice of ice cream on top of cinnamon sugar pita chips, all covered with whipped cream and a sprinkling of nuts and a cherry on top. We thought this sundae was delicious. You do get to pick your own ice cream flavors and pretty innovative. Those pita chips taste like jumbo cinnamon toast crunch. Now don't forget you do have Dole Whip nachos over at Marketplace Snacks as well in Disney Springs. So you can just have ice cream nacho snack crawl basically. We went to Blaze Fast Fired Pizza. We sat down for a meal at a few restaurants this week. And as always, you can see the full reviews over at DisneyFoodBlog.com along with how each restaurant is handling new health and safety protocols. But at Blaze, we tried a longtime customer favorite, the Meat Eater Pizza, and a new menu addition, the Cinnamon and Sugar Knots. The Meat Eater Pizza comes with pepperoni, meatballs, red onion, mozzarella cheese, and a classic red sauce. You can customize your toppings, pick your own crust, including gluten-free and keto options. And just like every other pizza we've had there, it was cooked really, really well. As for those dessert cinnamon and sugar knots, they were very tasty, though we could have used more icing, but that's a common theme for DFB and cinnamon roll treats. And we'd recommend ordering your dessert after your pizza as these knots should be eaten hot. Over at Pizza Ponte, there's a new chicken parmigiana sandwich. And the chicken parm itself had a heavier breading than we personally love, and the sandwich could have used a bit more sauce, although this definitely made it into some of the better chicken parm dishes we've had. It's not currently on the permanent menu, but we do hope it sticks around. At Paradiso 37, we treated ourselves to a full three-course meal. The beef empanada starter had a great crispy crust, though we could have used a bit more filling and a little more spice. 
For our entree, we chose the seared salmon filet, which came with cilantro rice, roasted vegetables, and grilled lemon. This was very well done, and the sides were a great compliment to the fish. And by well done, I mean it was good. It wasn't like overly done. <laughs> For dessert, you can now get mini ice cream cones, which were so cute. An order comes with four waffle cones with vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, and cookies and cream ice cream flavors. Keep in mind that unless you have four people ready to grab those cones as soon as they come out, they're probably going to melt pretty quickly. So if it's just you eating them, time to go fast. In merchandise news, we've got new magic bands, y'all. We spotted three new magic bands this week. World of Disney had two new solid color bands, magenta and neon yellow. Both are $14.99. And we also saw a new Cinderella design. The gold on white band features fireworks behind Cinderella Castle and the quote, make dreams come true. This one is $24.99. We've also got a bunch of new lounge fly bags. Two new cloth lounge fly backpacks at World of Disney. One features iconic Mickey balloons and a bright blue background, and the other is an emerald green color with our favorite birds from the Enchanted Tiki Room. Both are 75 bucks and we're flying off the shelves. They could not keep those in stock. There are a few more bags to add to your radar. Disney Pixar 25th Anniversary Icons Mini Backpack is covered in our favorite Pixar characters like Flick and Heimlich, Kevin and Doug, Boo, Mike Wazowski, Woody and Buzz, and more. Disney Princess Sketch Lounge Fly Backpacks each feature a different Disney princess. Sleeping Beauty, Cinderella, Snow White, or Rapunzel. Both the Pixar Backpack and Princess Sketch Backpacks are available at Hot Topic. And over on Shop Disney, we saw Pirates of the Caribbean Backpack. It's so cute! With cute little characters of the animatronics in the classic attraction. This one is $75. Now there's a bunch of new tie-dye merch. Summer is here and so are some fun tie-dye and neon collections. We spotted lots of tie-dye merch in World of Disney, including tees, tanks, dresses, shorts, and more. Those tie-dye spirit jerseys we reported on last week have made their way into the store as well. And there's a brand new Mickey collection that's debuted, and it's called Mickey Parts. The collection features Mickey's gloves, shoes, ears, and shorts on tees, dresses, button-up shirts, sweatshirts, and even some very practical stacking organizer cubes. All right, you guys ready for back to school? If you're already thinking about back to school time, Disney is ready with the merch. Several lunch boxes, kids' backpacks, Varsity Jackets with Spider-Man, Anna and Elsa, Woody and Buzz and Mickey and Minnie have debuted on Shop Disney. There's also some pencil kits and princess stationery and even a cute little chalkboard perfect for the first day of school photo. And if you want to celebrate a teacher in your life, Shop Disney also released some new Marvel tees that say teachers are superheroes in disguise. Now here's some important and interesting info. I know everything's important and interesting, but this is a big deal. We were already super excited to see Disney balloons for sale in Disney Springs nearly right away, but a new must-have balloon has joined the bunch, you guys. You can now get a baby Yoda on your balloon, something to keep in mind for your next trip to Disney World. All right, let's talk socks. A whole lot of people on our team said they're not really sock people, but they'd make an exception for these new ones we just spotted at World of Disney. Pain and Panic from Hercules can now be found in a mismatching pair of socks for $14.99. But if you want to take advantage of a great deal, you can get two pairs of socks for $11.99. So consider picking up the duck and bunny pair from Toy Story. All right, Jose and Rosita Tiki Mugs. Tiki Land Trading Company has just debuted two new mugs that are the perfect fit if you're looking to create your own own tropical hideaway. The Jose and Rosita Tiki mugs are both available for pre-order on the Tiki Land Trading Co. website at $95 each or both for $170. Now remember, Jose and Rosita, of course, are part of the Enchanted Tiki Room. All right, Alex and Ani is celebrating Pride Month with a new rainbow charm bracelet. The silver tone bangle features a rainbow shaped charm with a cutout of Mickey for $44.99. And finally, we've got a brand new Monsters University merch collection. There's a tie-dye Monsters University shirt, a classic baseball tee, tees and sweatshirts featuring Mike and Sully and the Monsters University logo, backpacks, plush crossbody bags, a lanyard holder, a new pin set, and even a new plush Sully in the collection. Whew, that was one of our longer news reports here on DFB. There's so much stuff happening, so we're still anticipating a bunch more news to come out of Disney World and Disneyland, and I can't wait to share it with you this week. So stay tuned, you guys. Be sure to head over and follow our social media channels. 
get on the Disney Food Blog newsletter. We get everything out immediately. Those of you who are on it can attest that we send out that Disney news. Even if it's late at night, we'll get it out to you right away so you know first up, especially when we get that reservation information. I know that that's gonna be something that people are super excited about. So stick with us. We got all the news for you. Thanks for listening and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog and we'll see you real soon.